Gaussian process is often abbreviated as GP. First, what is that? The Gaussian process is a set of random variables every subset of which has a Gaussian distribution. And in, uh, so this is what a Gaussian process is in general. Now, in our case, more particularly, we uh, consider a family of random variables that are indexed by their spatial position. And also, we assume that the covariance function is some analytical function, so something that we can easily compute. of the distance between any two members of this family. Now, can you choose any function that you fancy? So let's say, so I've, I've always plotted functions, you know, I've always plotted, let's say, this function or that function. But uh, could you, let's say, for example, use a function that decays to zero and then just stays exactly zero? Do you have an intuition? What is the set of permissible functions? Yeah? Um, no, they do not have to decrease monotonously. Um, I think for interpretation, this is you know what what makes sense. But I, I can give you a counterexample. So let's say um, if I'm looking at uh, let's say I want to uh, I have time here and I have temperature there and or temperature differences, and then you have seasonal effects, and then you will find that on average. You know, if you have close by neighbors, you ha get similar values, but if you have a distance of one year, you also get similar values. So it need not be monotonously decreasing, even though in most cases you're right. Eh? In most cases it is. Say again? I'm not sure I understand. So if you have two points. Um, so here I talked about time, and usually I've talked about space. So I'm just calling this x. Uh, I just wanted to give an example, which is, uh, you know, uh, where it's obvious that we might have uh, these non-local correlations. Um, so, you know, hint, hint, if you think about SVMs, or hint, hint, if you think about uh, this Rahimi and Recht procedure, which we discussed, where we approximated the kernel 
by just sampling from the spectral density no no i'm making it to i mean so what's special about kernels we discussed it in in, S in svms you know what property kernels have to be to fulfill to be valid kernels to be mercer kernels positive semi definite yeah exactly so um so this is just an aside uh, we can pick any function which is positive semi-definite. Well, because covariance functions must be positive semi-definite. Or we can recur to the wiener kinchin theorem and say that, uh, so this is an, an aside, uh, the so this is the Vina which you saw on our slide number two today. Vina Kinchin theorem, which says that um, the power spectral density of a stochastic process is the Fourier transform of its covariance function. Now, the power spectral density tells you how much energy does the signal have at a given frequency, and power spectral densities cannot be negative. So the power spectral density must be non-negative, and the Fourier transform of a non-negative measure is something that's positive semi-definite. Okay, so... Uh, in particular, this means the function that I've drawn here, so if we have correlation decaying with distance and then staying exactly zero, that would not be permissible. Because in the Fourier, if we take the Fourier transform of this, we will get something uh, that has wiggles, and uh, yeah, that would not work. Uh, so more, if you want to know it in more detail, so I could say that... Um, this tent function, I can uh, represent it as convolution of um, ah, I might have made a mistake. Um, convolution of the box kernel with itself. And if I now take the Fourier transform of this, I take the sink and I multiply it pointwise with another sink. Sorry, this is a terrible drawing. I, I mean here the sink of as a function of frequency. Uh, and then I indeed get something which is non-negative. So actually this would work. But if we convolve it uh, one more time, uh, we get an odd power of the sink which does have negative elements and which is not permissible. Okay? So this is the class of uh, the positive... So all functions which give you positive semi-definite covariance matrices are admissible in this field. Now for the Gaussian process, uh, it is for, for Gaussian distributions in general, it is enough to know their mean and their covariance function to characterize them completely. So if you have a Gaussian random variable, there is nothing beyond the mean and the covariance that is worth knowing. There is not more to it. Okay? So, to get the full joint distribution of all of my random variables in the set, It is sufficient to specify or you know, to guess through our... It is sufficient to specify the mean. And to make things simple, we claim that uh, the mean is going to be zero. And we also need the covariance function.
and we assume that the covariance of y of xi and y of xj is simply a function of their distance. So I'm, I will show a picture to try and make this more intuitive. I'm looking at the following situation. I'm looking at three random variables now. They each have a distance of one. And I've used a function that gently decays with distance from my covariance. And I now assume that at uh, the location At the first location, I assume that, what did I assume? Let me check. Uh, yeah. I assume that my observation is zero. And at this position, I assume that my observation is one. And now the task is to make a prediction for the third random variable. So I'm asking for the probability density function or just p to make it short of my y at the location x3 given my y at the location x1 and y at the location x2. So this is a conditional density. And well, Gaussians have the special property that uh, the joint, the marginal, the conditional of a Gaussian are always Gaussians themselves. 